Well, hi everyone, I'm Lori LeBay with Alzheimer's Speaks and I am proud to bring you today Dementia in the Arts. This is part two of a two-part series for November. Um, our first half uh, featured three men and the work that they do in photography, paint and woodworking. And this second session is going to feature three artists from three different countries who just couldn't come to the time slot that we had. So I met with them individually because we want to be inclusive with this project. So we have two women and a man, and uh, they talk about paint and art and coloring and jewelry. And it's going to be, again, another fantastic conversation. So please help me welcome our guests. I want to introduce you to Elle Marie, and I'm not even going to try to attempt her last name. Um, I'm going to let her say that because I don't want to mess it up. She is over in South Africa, and she couldn't make our group session. So, of course, we wanted to make sure that we edit her in because she just does some beautiful, beautiful art and such a wide variety. So, Elle Marie, do you want to tell people your name and a little bit about yourself? Yes. Uh, hello, and Laurie, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Elmarie Janssen van Rensburg, and I'm from South Africa. Uh, I have, uh, I've been diagnosed in 2018 with vascular dementia and cognitive impairment. And for two years, and I just cried and I couldn't see a lot. Everything was just black and I just couldn't do anything. And then I got a uh, mentor, uh, Paul Ann. She got the wings in the meantime. And um, she said to me, no, I've got to find something to do. And then the art thing started. Wonderful. And for those of you that don't know, Polly Ann Gordon um, just passed away, but she is part of Dementia Mentors, where Elle Marie met her. And so if anyone out there is looking for a mentor, that is a great place to go. It's just DementiaMentors.org. And there's no fee. This is all free, but people with dementia can match up with another person with dementia. So thank you so much for that introduction. And so you didn't start doing art until uh, a couple of years after your dementia diagnosis. Is that correct, Elmery? Yes, I've had no, no, no um, art training at whatsoever. I know I've, I've always been autistic because if my children wanted to have a cow drawn for a ta um, some assignment, I would have drawn a cow. And I can just draw, I did it well, but I never had time to do that. And um, last year in 2020, I think, or end of 2019, I discovered something on YouTube that um, uh, paper beads, I started making paper beads, but that didn't fly. That really, well, it, um, I made beautiful ones. And um, I even sold some. And then I discovered this wonderful lady, Heather Boyd Wire. Um, she is an inspiration to anybody. She makes jewelry out of wire and beads and she paints. She's a wonderful artist. The, Jewelry is wonderful. I started with um, pliers that you use for electrical uh, stuff that doesn't work very well, but I managed. And um, then I got new proper pliers from my sister-in-law, which is wonderful. And um, I were able to make most beautiful, beautiful uh, bracelets and necklaces and rings and Everybody loves it. And that's actually how I met, met you was through your jewelry. Um, seeing you post all of these beautiful things you had made. It was just incredible. So let's, uh, I'm going to share my screen and then we're going to kind of go over some different pieces here. Let's do the jewelry first. Do you want to explain this one here, Elmarie? Oh, that's uh, just wire that, you, um, that is actually very difficult to do. 
I don't know how to explain it. Um, but it's coils that you link together in a like a chain. And um, it is very difficult, but I managed it and I really love it. It's you can beautiful. see there's a lot of marks on it. Mm -hmm. But the photography is not good because I don't know how to do the photography. Okay, well, no, it looks it looks gorgeous to me. So so that's one bracelet here. Let's go to another piece here. This one has a little bit of the same. It looks like squiggle, but it's but it's very different on the on the bracelet portion itself. Oh yes, um, I think I got that tutorial from Lan An or somebody like that. It, it's it's not very it's not my original work the previous one also uh it's i can't remember if, if that's my original work or just the tutorial that i've followed but there's another one okay let me see um now the only other one that i see that's jewelry here is this piece here that's uh for a necklace it looks like a blue st oh yes um that's my own work. Um, that's why wrapping. And um, that's a bit wonky. But um, I have hand tremors, very bad hand tremors. And um, so bad that I can't really write. If I write, I have to write in big letters. And then it, it's still uh, shaky. And um, But the wonderful thing is, I can write, oh, I can paint, I can draw, I can make the jewelry. And my hands don't, I have tremors when I do that. It must be on some different places in your brain. I don't know, I can't explain it, but it makes me happy. It almost makes you wonder that when you're using that artistic part of the brain, if it calms the other section down somehow that causes the tremors or something. Yeah, it would be interesting for that to be investigated. Let's look at a few other pieces that you have here. Now, this one is a little uh, uh, different. This one is earrings and it's on a, pair, it's on a, a cup, it looks like. Um, yes, that is part of a 10-day um, challenge that I did for earrings. And I really like that. Uh, I didn't win anything, but it was fun doing it. So yeah, you get every day something else that they either put out there and you've got the whole day to make that. And um, to finish by the, uh, in 10 days. And that was quite fun. We, I, I did all this stuff, or most of it, when we were under lockdown five, when the first lockdown, COVID lockdown came. That kept me busy. So I have a question for you. So do you have to like solder these like little hanging pieces on to that triangle no. portion? Okay. No, you you sort of um, bend it and wrap it around in an artistic way. For oh, it, I see for that now that I look closer. Um, I can't solder. Um, I've been banned from anything that's hot or burn or can cause harm. Okay. I didn't see the loopiness until I looked closer just now when you said that. And it's like, oh, okay. Because I, I was wondering if that was, a, you know, a safety issue, if you were using a, a soldering gun or something like that. So beautiful piece as well. Well, let's go on to some of your other uh, pieces here. How about this one? This one is... Uh, a black and white. Yes, um, that's a zentangle uh, thing that I did the day before yesterday. Gary from Dementia Mentors uh, at some time ago, every Wednesday he had something going, uh, art or music or something. And he had this lady that did the um, zentangles for for the group and i was mesmerized it was wonderful and i discovered it again on youtube and i tried that one but the thing is i can't follow instructions anymore so that one is not a perfect 
example of whatever type of zen tangle that is. But that's my own effort. But I like it. I think it's beautiful. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. All, all of your work is just absolutely amazing. Here's another one. Now, this one is uh, blue, white, and black. That's also zinc tangles. And it took me two days and a very short thumb and a lot of concentration. But I think that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And um, I managed it. Somehow, It it's like my brain goes down and then the art is somehow, somehow doing something for my brain to keep it busy, keep it working. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't, I battle to follow instructions, but I can do it for the first part and then somehow I lose it. And then I'll watch the um, tutorials over and over and over until I can get the, um, the way you do the things. Um, my words somehow disappear sometimes. Um, the procedure, the way you do the things, okay. technique. That's a word, technique. Okay. If I've got the technique, I can do whatever I want. Wonderful. Let's see what else and we've got makes- here. Okay, here's another one. I love this one. This one is um, all different colors. It looks like... Um, someone almost like climbed up a ladder and is sitting on top of it with other faces looking in. There's so many different images in this one that I see. Oh, oh. Oh, yes. That is acrylic painting. I've tried that with uh, on a piece of paper and a carton that I cut straight and I put down the paint and I scraped it in different ways and I took a hair comb and then I scratched it, and then I looked at it, and I discovered all those wonderful things in the paint. Wow. And, and, I, and I took um, a koki, a pen, and I drew the things that I discovered there. Uh, there's a man with a hoodie, and there's a face with red face, and under that is a man with a tiger face. On the one side, there's a chicken and there's a horse and there's uh, white picket fence and flowers. That is so fun. That was so much fun. And most all of my stuff is uh, being done like that. Yeah, this is incredible. It's just, uh, and I and I see all those things you're talking and then this one. That's poppies. The thing here is I can try different flowers, but I don't really care what type of flower it is. There's a way that they talk about loose painting in watercolor painting. And I'm trying my best to do the loose color painting because that that takes more of my imagination than just putting down so much detail that the idea gets lost. Um, I want people to just get the idea um i don't do art that explains what happens in my head and happens in my life because of um dementia i use my blog for that uh there i write it down what happens in my life because of dementia but this i just purely do for fun and um it's beautiful and it makes me feel i've got a purpose I feel proud of myself. You should. Here's another uh, floral. This one has uh, more red flowers in it here and uh, has a gold trim. And again, is is the same. Now, this one is, is kind of abstract. This one has the silver trim. And this looks like it might be a watercolor too. Oh, yes, that one. Um, it's just really just putting down some paint. I'm, I'm trying to get the different techniques. And most of the time, it, it, it just works out wonderful, painting watercolor and doodling on it, on top of it. So um, that's fun. It, it is um, better than copying stuff or 
certain trying. Well, there's it's it's it, it's wonderful. Um, I know people that does wonderful. Um, what do you call it if the painting is um, uh, realistic? Mm -hmm. Realistic paintings. That's wonderful. But I want to try and rather go for more um, abstract. I don't know how su successful I am at abstract. Well, I think it's but, gorgeous, um, and I and I like that you focus on what you see. And then highlight that. I think that's brilliant. And I think that takes a lot of stress off of the creation portion too, I would think. Now, here's a, here's a portrait that you did. Who's this of? That portrait, uh, it's blue and pinkish and purplish. Yep, with a, with a wood frame. That was an accident. That was an accident? Was well, a gorgeous accident. <laughs> I promised you. I promised you. I put down paint to make a background once again, and I tried to dry it, and my fingers touched the painting on the left hand side, and I smeared it by accident. And then I was very upset, and I dried it, and then the next moment I looked, oh, and I saw this face, and I just took charcoal, and I just drew. On exactly on the lines, I think the jaw and the neck and the eyes, the whole thing, the 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 black is um, charcoal, and I just filled in the face that I saw. So that was a wonderful accident. Oh, amazing! I my fingers, and to, I I I think it's. I've always been able to see things. I see things. If I can see a thing, I know it. If I see a thing, I can remember it. If you can explain something to me, I can. I have to try until I can see things. I don't know what type, what side of my brain it is, but that's what happens in my mind. It's, it's always been like that. And um, I don't know what will happen if I ever lose that. This is, it's exquisite. I, I, uh, I just love it. I think it's beautiful. Now here's one, and this is a floral, and this is in a thick gold frame with all different colors of, of flowers in this. And it looks like you did the watercolor background. And then in this one too, did you just outline what you saw in there or did you actually try to paint the flowers? I wanted to do flowers, but not real flowers. So I put down the paint the way I wanted it. And then I started doodling and just draw it. Beautiful. I, I love how creative you are. Here's another one. This one has three. I think this one is the poppy one. Yes. And this is beautiful yes. too. Your your techniques are just wonderful to see. And I think that's the last one. I think I tried the tutorial there as far as I could get and then it got lost. Mm -hmm. So, but um so eventually, I think if you get lost halfway through the tutorial, it makes it your own. I like drawing flowers. I like painting flowers. Mm -hmm. But my whole drawing thing started with my brother who passed away um, in uh, January of this year from COVID. And I did a um, pencil sketch of him. And it is absolutely um perfect and uh it's my memorial for him i couldn't be on a f uh, uh, funeral for him or anything his name is johannes it would have been his birthday this this month on this ninth and i miss him so much what a beautiful picture in in memory though that you've captured you can see the kindness in his eyes and his smile. Oh, it was wonderful. He was a kind and good man. So loving. And um, I must say, 2020 and 2021 with the COVID stuff didn't just bring bad things. Um, 
it got me painting and got me doing jewelry. And, but it brought so much sadness too. Mm -hmm. Being isolated. But then with all this, the art keeps me busy. It yep. keeps my mind off these things. It calms me down. And uh, if I notice something is going backwards, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I can still paint or do jewelry. And sometimes it comes back. Like I say, I can't draw, but I can paint and make jewelry. Where do, you, where do you put all of your stuff? Do you give it as gifts? Do you sell it? Do you exhibit it? Well, at the moment, it's just all in the flip file. <laughs> <laughs> but but in, terms of, in terms of, do you have it up in your house or do your kids have it? What do no, you my, my, kids, my kids still live with me. They are students, Laura and Nita, and, uh, and my husband, Andres. Uh, we live here and um, it's all stuck in a flip file for the moment. I wish I could sell it, but. So you don't I have don't it, know. you don't have it on your walls or anything? No. No, oh, 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 the frames that you see mm -hmm. is, um, I've, I've, I've put it on the frames on with um, an app that I found on my cell phone. Oh. Because Toby, because Toby said it will be much nicer if I can put it in a frame. So I decided I can't frame this stuff. So I'm using an app on my phone and framing it like that. It does give it a boost. I know my daughter and I had done some painting at, uh, we just went to um, a, a store here that did some painting. And I took her when she was 16, kicking and screaming because the last person she wanted to be with was her mom. <laughs> and I just wanted to kind of, you know, capture a moment in time with the two of us and and they both turned out great but boy once you frame them they really pop your work is so incredible if somebody is interested in a, your jewelry or your art is that something you're open to selling at all yes and would you be open to having your um, work exhibited if someone approached you and wanted it at a conference or shown in a hospital or a clinic or yes Okay. I'm in South Africa, so I don't know if people in South Africa watch this or, or which way or what, but I'm willing. Okay. I'd love that. Yeah. One of the things we've talked with, with the others um, in this group is about if somebody wants to exhibit, that's fine, but they have to be the ones paying for shipping and, and crating up and displaying it properly and, and things like that too. That shouldn't be a cost of of the artist itself. So, well, thank you so much for your time and sharing um, your gift with us. Absolutely incredible work that you do. Keep it up. I, I, I love seeing what you do when it pops up. It brightens my day every time I see a piece of work done by you, Elmarie. So thank you. Thank you very much, Lori, for this opportunity. I love it. And thank you for your kindness. And I love your comments on my work. Elmarie is on Facebook. Um, as well as our other artists and stuff. So you can you can follow them and uh, and watch their work. So again, thank you so much. Appreciate it, Elmarie. And now I want to introduce you to Natalie Ive. Uh, she wasn't able to make the group session because she's over in Melbourne, Australia. And the time difference was pretty significant, but we didn't want to miss her artwork and her thoughts on dementia and the arts. So Natalie, thank you so much for squeezing me in and uh, being able to have this conversation. I can't wait for people to see the artwork that you do. It's pretty fabulous. So Natalie, if you want to introduce yourself in terms of what age you got diagnosed, why don't we start there? Okay, so I was first diagnosed, um, say 47 years of age, and it's been a three year long arduous journey, some awful times in the process of being diagnosed. And that's pretty common. It's not easy to get a diagnosis, especially at such a young age. What type of dementia do you have? Yeah, so I have young onset dementia, primary progressive aphasia, and it's the language part of the brain, finding words. Um, okay. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. Everybody has different types of dementia that we're interviewing and this is just a great way to educate people on you know 
what you might what you might have out there because there's all different types of dementia. And most people are just familiar with Alzheimer's and you know don't understand all of the different variables. So I'm really um, excited and anxious for you to show off some of the artwork that you're doing. But before I have you show your first piece, I always like to ask if you did art prior to getting diagnosed. Uh, yes, yeah, so Laurie, I enjoyed art at um, school, at secondary college. I discovered that I you know, had this artistic side to me. So you know, I made sure that I explored that. And um, as I got nearer to the end of my secondary schooling, um, I actually did a an art piece um, with a sort of diamond art mosaic to it um, for my portfolio. So that was really exciting and I passed that. Well, why don't you show us your, your first piece that you'd like to share with us? Okay, so over here, I have a regal lion. And this took me about two months um, to paint. That is amazing. The colors yeah. are spectacular. They're vibrant. Yeah. And I picked them in particular because they're vibrant. And I believe that I'm a lioness. And with, you know, living with young onset, you know, that I can conquer anything. You know, there are barriers, but I can get through them. And, and I dedicated that to my eldest daughter, the actual um, painting. So um, I really enjoyed it. And it was therapeutic. You know, it's my place to go to paint where, where words fail me. Painting doesn't fail me. You know, I'm able to express myself without, wor you know, worrying about. It all just flows easily, you know, and it's great. Oh, it's just, it's such an uplifting portrait. It just, it, it just, um, as somebody, you know, looking at it, I mean, it just, it's just full of good vibes. I mean, it just puts you in a great mood just looking at it. And the eyes are so detailed on that as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, I was, it was just so intense, the process. And I was enjoying every minute, you know, um, and I wanted to be in that space. Um, so I'm just finding with um, the younger onset, you know, a place where it's therapeutic for me is to paint or to do any sort of um, art. And I'm able to express myself freely there. Well, I, I am so thrilled that you found that creative spot. And what a beautiful gift to your daughter. And I love the symbolism behind it, that you're a lioness and you can, you can adapt mm -hmm. to anything. And that is really cool. Yeah, so that my daughter, you know, has that and looks at it every time and, and remembers you know, what that, you know, painting was all about, you know, so he's my cat. She saying hello. <laughs> now, do you have a, another piece that you want to share yeah. with us? Yes, I do. And over here I have um, peregrine falcons are my favorite um, bird of prey. Can you see it there? Yep. Yep. And uh, so this is a diamondate. Um, art mosaic and this had taken me about a year oh my gosh to complete and um again it was it just involved re repetition and I enjoy repetition um and you know it also calms me down with the world around me so I like to be in that space and I would imagine, I mean, you have to have a lot of patience and a lot of stillness to be able to get all those little diamonds in place. Yeah. Well, you find like, you know, family and friends ask, how can you do that? I would find that irritating, you know, <laughs> it will give me the opposite effect, you know, I'll be all anxious and um, I don't know. It just, it centers me. I found that, you know, just um, it works for me. And that's all I can say. But I enjoy, you know, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed doing now, that. Now, did you draw that freehand first or was that? No. Was, okay. So so behind that, um, it's like on a canvas and they photograph it and then they put this adhesive glue on it. And then you place the diamonds, these letters, 
to every corresponding number that's on that photo. Okay. You just use that. So A is number 12, so A12, and you keep sort of like putting diamonds on those, um, you know, B17. And Almost sounds like bingo. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's that repetition and it's easy to follow it and I'm still, you know, using the brain mm-hmm. and the plasticity and so everything involves, you know, creating different pathways where we're enhancing what I had. Wonderful. That That's that's a gorgeous piece. And to stay so focused for a year's time frame too, you know, to put that together, that detail, um, gosh, what what gorgeous work you do. Thank you. No, it, it's like oh, I do lots of advocacy work as well. And so when things get a bit too much, I find that getting back into my art space, you know, that um, helps me get through life. It calms me down. Um, it allows me to release things that I don't have barriers with. I can express myself freely. I think that's what it is. Um, I love you know, that. I think we all need to find that space. <laughs> especially oh, it's so in this, important. Yeah, especially in the crazy world that we live with, you know, everything's mm-hmm. up in the air and to be able to to hold that place of of peace and comfort and expression. You know, when you were talking about the lion and, you know, purposely picking the colors, you know, to express, you know, your emotion and your passion and and stuff. That's fabulous. Now I think you have a third piece there too to show us. Okay, so this third piece I'm still working on. It's working progress. So it's of Kurt Cobain, former Kurt Cobain um, singer. And um, it's a canvas again. And then again, it allows me to um, use brush techniques. And um, it, it, it's not all easy you know, it, um, to navigate. But with this one in particular, I must mention that it's um, painting. It's painting by numbers, mm-hmm. um, but you still have to use those techniques, you know, to go within the lines and use different brush techniques, thickness and um, textures. So it, there's still a lot of work that goes into that. Um, and what I'm work, I I don't have it here because it's not ready. But I'm working on a sketch of a photo that I found. Um, yeah, and um, so I'm trying to put that onto a canvas and turn it into a, a oil painting. Oh wow! Now, right. what, what kind of paint did you use for this one of Kurt Cobain? So this is acrylic. So okay. it's mixed with a bit of acrylic, and I believe there's a bit of oil in there. I can see, you know, just a little bit of oil. But um, yeah, because when I use the brushes to clean them, it's not that easy to take off. So. <laughs> Yeah, so I figured out that that's what was, in, you know, of course, naturally. So so wow. I've left that because I've been busy of late, you know, but once I sort of like things calm down, I'll probably end up going back to it. Okay. Well, wonderful. Have you ever thought, um, or maybe you already have, I know you said you do a lot of advocacy. Have you ever considered having your work be displayed like in an exhibit or been approached to do that? That's one of the things I I would love personally to see more of. And I know it's hard with COVID right now, but for, you know, different, anything from clinics to homes to libraries, I, I, I just think it would be really neat to get more of the artwork out done by people living with dementia to kind of change that perception of what is possible. Yeah. And I'm glad that you mentioned that, you know, um, because I think we're all artists in our own way. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, specific art, you know, and that's considered, you know, that, that that's great. It can be anything, you know, you can do anything and it can be a form of art. I believe that. It's yep. in the eye of the beholder, that's true, you know. But I think in terms of dementia and I'm all for, you know, putting our artwork out there, you know, to shift that perception, you know, of dementia and showcase the wonderful work, you know, the inner spirit that comes out in our, you know, in our artwork, who we are as people, not being able to always express with my words but in my artwork here here I am 
this is who I am and showcase that. So it would be great if that could be, you know, something in the future. Yeah, even like coffee shops and things like that. There's so many different venues that are out there or, or clinics, you know, doctor's offices even, you know, everybody it gets their little interior designers out there to do stuff, but why aren't we tapping into what's already there and, and what real people are doing? I, I just think there's so much power in education in being able to do that. When I was talking with the, the other group, you know, we had talked about, you know, if people are going to be approached to have their artwork in exhibits that also making sure that those asking for that artwork cover the shipment, proper shipment and display of it and getting it back to you as well, where I've seen so often where that burden of cost and organization of getting that all done is put back on the person with dementia. And it's like, no, this needs to be incorporated in the business. And most people don't have a pile of cash sitting in their backyard, you know, just to say, how can I spend this money? And we need to be conscious of, of the work that you've already put in. I'm such an advocate for people living with dementia. My mom lived with it for 30 years. And right. I, there's so much that um, you guys teach us. If we would just shut up and listen, you know, and pay attention <laughs> and be inclusive and, and, and take the time, take the time to get to know people. Well, I really appreciate you sharing with us today. Thank you very much. Well, I have another guest uh, that was not able to make it to our main get together. So I want to introduce you to Toby Hayworth, and I'm going to let him tell his story about his diagnoses that he's dealing with. He's going to share his artwork, and we're just going to have a lot of fun. I think you're going to be amazed at at what he accomplishes in, in this sphere of art. It's, it's pretty cool. So, Toby, you want to tell people a little bit about yourself? Okay, uh, I'm 53, and I live in a small town of maybe 3,000 people. I uh, have dementia and Parkinson's that is classified as Lewy body disease. Um, I've had dementia now for about three years. Um, And I've had Parkinson's for about six years. I live in a town called Grand Valley. Uh, it's in Ontario, Canada. Um, I've been in the arts world for, I've been painting for at least 30 years. Um, I came into it accidentally. Um, and it was just pouring paints on the floor and it formed designs and I thought, okay, well, let's take it to the next step. And it all stems around me having learning disabilities and on top of the dementia, I guess I think differently and it comes out in my paintings. Um, The paintings are what's going on inside me. physically and mentally. That was a wonderful summary. Why don't we have you show some of your artwork and explain kind of each piece to us as as you show it to us. This piece came from, I was um, really scattered in my thinking and the color purple came from um, a a show I had just seen that they used a lot of purple in their artwork. Um, So I combined both of them. This is what I came up with. So, uh, thank you. Um, Now, artwork like this one, I was going more into the positive side of my brain. so to speak. Um, And it's just the waves of life, basically. Um, So 
within my dementia, I get my good days and I get my bad days and I get my horrible days. So all of these are really an expression of what I go through. Is there meaning to the circle in the lower corner? Yeah, um, the circle represents the circle of life, really. Okay. Um, uh, and I put on some paintings. I've done some paintings that are just circles, like this one up here. Okay. Uh, and people are very attracted to it. Uh, just because it makes you stop and think of mm -hmm. the whole meaning. Um, but I've incorporated the circles into some of my paintings, whether they're obvious or not. Um, I find people are really attracted to paintings that have a circle element in them well, it's an exact circle or if it's an egg-shaped circle. Now, these two down here, they're painted on wood. Um, and th these two were done just around the time that I really was told yes, you have dementia, and this is what we're going to start to do, and you're going to have care coordinators come and visit you, and all of this. So that's more the positive one. And then I went into more negative feelings. So... That was a space of like three months. Okay. And then we got into uh, creative. Now this one isn't, sorry, the lighting. This one isn't really based on anything. It was just me trying to be creative in a different way of painting on glass. Um, and letting the paint do what it wants. Um, and you can see up close uh, that there's a lot of, I guess, uh, texture to it. Um, oh, I see so many different things, like a microphone and somebody sitting in a chair. And I mean, I, I, I can just see so many different things when I look at it. You know, a key. Um, I saw another person in here. It looked like sitting in a desk earlier. Somebody walking. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see. It's beautifully done. I love it. Thank you. Uh, people have looked at it, but um, not hugely attracted to the messy side of painting. I, I would call it. Uh, so anyway, that's that one. Um, now I'm going to switch to one that people are getting more attracted to. Uh, is this one down here? I went through a phase of line art that is just purely lines on canvas, and they can be distorted within the painting. These are a progression of the symptoms of dementia and how it changes in time um, and how I was feeling because I've been on depression pills on and off over the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, and this is really the line of how I was feeling and where I was going. Okay. 
if that makes any sense. It makes a ton of sense. And I mean, a lot of people go through periods of depression, you know, with this disease. And I think that that's something really important for people to understand that that is very, very normal, not something anybody wants to sign up for, but definitely not unusual. Yeah, yeah. And then comes a very different type of painting. This one I was like really happy. I, it was a great time in that section of my life. So the colors really, they really come out. They're very vivid. And I was just, I was excited. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very different type of art than I usually do. Okay. Now, were these all brush strokes on that painting? Or no. They... Okay. I'll, I'll explain in every painting how I work with it. This is just you take a color and put it in placement of where you basically want it. So this was three colors here. And then you take a roller, paint roller, and just start to move it across. And then if you want it bumpy, then you just bump the uh, paint roller across. Okay. So, so then you get the different lines and you can go as much as you want or as little as you want. Okay. I was thinking it was a roller, but uh, you know, I'm, I, I really don't know. I was guessing. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Thank you. You're welcome. Now this one here, I like it because it's got a lot of depth. Um, and again, it, represents my mind at that time. It was a very dark time for me. Um, it, I was very scattered. Uh, I was very emotional. Um, that's about it. Okay. And this one, you basically put your background that mine was black and sections of brown mixed in. And then you grab, um, I, I grab a saran wrap or a garbage bag, and then I will put the white paint over here, cover this area with white, and then put the bag down here and then transfer it on and just keep on doing that until you're satisfied. Okay. Okay. Well, I love um, you sharing all these techniques. Yeah. Like I, I'll share all my techniques to anybody and they can decide whether they want to try it or not. I've, I forgot to say that um, I used to live in, a town called Havelock in uh, Ontario. It's known for its um, uh, music. And the libraries had me teach classes of art. Um, and the first class I was overwhelmed because 50 people showed up and we weren't expecting so many. Um, but had a really fun time. And this is one of the styles I got them to do. And they were just so excited to do it because they all said, I'm not an artist. I don't know anything about art. And I said, I basically said, everybody's got art in them. They just need to try it. It's implanted in us from childhood, 
from the schools in childhood, but we tend to forget it as we grow up. You, you can bring it back into your life, but uh, um, it just takes a little work. In, in some ways, I think we forget about it, but I think we, we purposely shelf it because of our egos getting in the way and thinking, you know, looking for approval and, and not thinking that we're good enough or have skilled enough to do something. And so because of, the, you know, society is so judgmental, I think a lot of people step back We're, when we're a kid, we don't care, you know, let's just have fun, let's explore. And I, I think it's really neat to be able to get into that space and, you know, go with the saying, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. So there's no wrong in any art that's done. Yeah, this is one wall of my art, but I forgot to show one and I don't know how it's going to, no, I'm going to have to show you another one because it's not looking correctly. Um, so now I take you over to this wall. And my art has changed. Mm -hmm. And it's very noticeable that it's changing. And... I'm not completely sure why, but I have a feeling it's a lot to do with my dementia and my way of thinking. How does this piece make you feel that you're showing us right now? It's very interesting in, in, in two ways. It's very uh, warm to me, um, mm -hmm. inviting, but with the Parkinson's, it's also showing me a spine that is uh, going out of whack. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what I'm feeling right now. Okay. It kind of hits home, right? Mm -hmm. The other ones I'm going to show you here are scattered parts of my life. Um, the first one is the O that I was showing you, uh, before, um, and that was the first test run and people were very attracted to this one. So I experimented from there. Um, this O comes both from my childhood because my dad had a big O, uh, wooden O on the wall, one of the walls in the house, and it was gold, um, flakes of gold. But it comes from a Shakespeare play, and the Shakespeare play is Othello. Um, so I, I just wanted to see if I could reproduce something like that on canvas mm -hmm. so this was my attempt uh this one um this was an experiment um and the blues are very positive for me so I was positive, but I was confused at the same time. Mm -hmm. And this one I won't sell because you can see deep inside it, there's a lot of meaning to it. Okay. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of meaning. Um, and it took a long time for me to do this. So it does hit home. Okay. And it was around the same time that I did this one. I don't know if the lighting's cut. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, so this one again has a lot of emotion in it. 
a lot of feeling. Uh, and th this one, I did all with my fingers. Oh, like, really? Yeah, my fingers were covered in paint. It didn't bother me because it gets quite detailed. And you can start to see a lot of different things in this piece when you start actually looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing pretty well uh, that it really was a reflection of my mind. It was done in the last year. I, I can see my mind is getting muddled. Mm -hmm. And that's all part of my dementia. Um, and I'm having more challenges with my dementia now than I ever thought I would. It's interesting when you say your mind is more muddled because I look at that picture and I'm like, how vibrant and how detailed it is. And so when I, when I look at it, I don't see muddled at all. I just see gorgeous detail. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. This one is the same story but it was on a completely different day and mindset and me thinking, what am I gonna leave behind in this world? Um, what's the purpose of me doing art? All the negative scenarios came out in this piece for me. See, and again, um, such great detail. And when I look at it, I see multiple, I see like a main face and then a bunch of other like people or voices. I, you know, to me, when I look at it, I see like the inner critic kind of yapping at you in your head and making you feel overwhelmed. But yeah, just very, very neat. Thank you. Well, oh, thank you. I, I... That's one thing my dad was really proud of me for before he passed away is my artwork. Uh, he, he said to me that he was very proud of me with the artwork I've done. Uh, and he was the biggest fan of it. And he had tons of my artwork up at his house. That kept me going. This one was a big challenge to do uh, because of its grand size. Um, this one comes out of music. The music I was playing was from Phil Collins, I believe. And I just started to put the music I was hearing onto the canvas. And this is what I came up with. Um, again, this is done with shopping bags uh, and paint on the side. Um, and you can see that there's a bit of a texture. Where mm -hmm. am I? There's a bit of a texture to it. And um, the colors kind of slide together on their own. Now I've got this huge collection here. And it just goes on and on. Um, but these, this is an interesting one to me because I'm getting into more solid colors and the lighting's awful. So this is more solid color. Uh, it really represents what's going on with me uh, at a whole different level. That this one is learning disabilities, dementia and Parkinson's all mixed in to form this because it's got a lot of detail in, in it that you may not see in the video. Mm -hmm. but it's all the lines of everything that's going through me. And 
This one took a long time. It's all by paintbrush. Um, so for the, the dots, did you just let the, the paint drip and harden as circles on there? No, the circles underneath are hot glue. Oh, okay. Um, and I dabbed those on first. And then I started painting over the hot glue. And some of these are actually hot glue underneath. So it raises the paint up. Okay. Rather than using a lot of paint, I just, I used oh. glue underneath. And okay. Painted. I never would have guessed that. <laughs> yeah. No, hot glue is really, really good. Uh, you have to prime it first before painting over it. So I use gesso uh, primer um, that you can get at any uh, art supply store. Um, and it works beautifully. Um, and you can mold the painting however you want. Now, saying that, I've been experimenting with cement on a canvas. And I'm finding the cement is very porous, the most cement is. So it's really changing the colors that I'm putting on it. So I'm not sure if I like it or hate it yet. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I'm playing with that concept. So with cement, you have to wait and then play around with it. Okay. Um, the other ones that I'd like to show people, not necessarily for the painting, but they are nice paintings, is this style. Again, the lighting's hopeful. This style here. Now, this is when you're in a creative mood and you're not really painting for emotion or what, what's going on in your mind. You're just wanting to paint. And for this, you lay out your colors like everybody else but I lay out my colors right on the canvas most of the time. Okay. So I will put white and black and white and black and white and black right on the canvas and start moving it around. Um, that's how I'm most comfortable doing my work uh, because, and um, this didn't match with the other one you're going to see right now. But I get a result like this on a different painting. So because I'm doing it on a canvas like this, I'll very carefully put a sponge on top of it and then whatever clings onto the sponge, I move over to here and then put it on a piece of paper. So you end up with another very creative painting. Wow. So for this, it was a garbage bag that I laid on top of a painting like this and then transferred it over. So this is just creative thinking in a dementia world. Okay. Thinking outside the box. Um, and I find I do that a lot. I start projects. I don't finish them. As for going out to galleries or shows, that doesn't usually happen because I don't have self-confidence in myself to 
do all the steps necessary to get there. And I don't feel that I have a person that can go out and represent what I do. So mm -hmm. I end up getting stuck. I get stuck with websites. Um, and I just, I feel like I can't do anything. And I've been told that's part of dementia. Um, uh, also with dementia, I get like four hours of sleep a night. Um, my sleep is very disturbed. So I will come down and paint at two o'clock in the morning. Um, I won't go get back to bed until 5 a.m. So I have to start being creative and this is what comes out. So again, these are, these are more expressions. I, I love your work and you know, it's, it saddens me and I understand about not being able to go out. If somebody wanted to do an exhibit of your work, you know, in terms of shipping it out and, and having someone assist in getting it to them, there's no reason that they couldn't do a video like this, that people could sit down and watch and then get up, visit the exhibit or something that could, you know, be a, um, a play along at any time, you know, where someone can just tap the screen and watch it if it's in a hospital or something. It, I mean, there's so many different ways to be able to work with this and still allow you to share what it is and why you do what you do. No, it's, it's so true. Uh, I, I, I think it's a play on self-confidence as well, because now I'm in the mindset of a uh, Louis body that's Parkinson's and dementia. So I'm just going, okay, well, like I'm limited on what I can do because everybody's saying that, well, you can't do this now, you can't do that, um, and you can't do the other. But I've had some good luck, uh, and I've had some horrible luck. <laughs> um, but it's really challenging me right now. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't wish it on anybody to go through this. I would suggest to anybody that is going through this, find a creative element that you can do, whether it's artwork, statues, uh, cement art, any number of things, um, painting doors, funky colors, um, because it will give you an outlet of what's going on. You won't feel so isolated in, in your mind because the one thing I've heard, and I know a friend uh, that has Parkinson's, he has said how important it is to speak to somebody that has the same thing going on. I was just going to ask you, um, are you open to selling your art? If somebody oh, here sees a piece that's of interest? Uh, absolutely. Um, um, I've got, <laughs> I got two ways to sell art. Um, I've got the first way of putting a price tag on it and saying, well, it costs this much that is affordable to most people. And then I've got the artwork that I go, they say, well, I haven't got much money. Um, this is my situation but I absolutely love this piece. And um, I basically say, well, give me an offer. And they'll say $20. And I'll just say, it's sold. 
I, I, I believe in if somebody really loves my work, I don't want to hold them back because I'm saying, no, I'm firm on the price. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but that's just my way of thinking okay. because I, I know down the road, I'll be so happy and satisfied that I've made somebody else happy. Now, do you have a, a website that we can send people to? I do have a website. It's called Elspeth Hayworth Center for the Arts. I really appreciate you taking all this time. It looks like you do some great photography too, and maybe we can catch that on our on our next meeting. Yes, absolutely. And uh, thank you for taking the time to hear me out. Well, Toby, I again just want to thank you so much for your time and sharing your expertise and your joy and really the range of emotions and all the different techniques you use. I just found it fascinating. So again, thank you. And for our audience, you know, please like, click and share. This is really important. And I think, I think this video really shows um, all the different techniques and abilities and types of things that you can try. And there's no right or there's no wrong, you know, just step into it, see what happens. So thanks again, everybody. We'll see you next time.